Last week on the Poison Rana Patreon, we talked all about Rocky and ECW Big Ass Extreme Bash in two brand new episodes of Reviews from the Six. Yeah, this was this was crazy, and I was shocked that it hadn't been like edited. Like some guy's jaw went in to be like, "Oh, make sure no Metallica in this show." You do this sort of thing, don't you? You watch through shows and you you flag if anything needs to be censored yeah, or is inappropriate yeah. or needs a, yeah, yeah, a yeah. warning or whatever. And I just I just picture someone like you on the WWE Network in 2014 putting all of this together and is watching this. And as New Jack comes out someone comes in and it's like we're, we're doing a coffee run do you want anything and he's like oh yeah I'll, I'll grab uh, it's Hachi could you grab me a you motherfucking could you, could you grab me a sandwich as well I was and jerking then, off in anyway, jail <laughs> anyway yeah th- thank you mate turns around and it's the end of and the I'm segment. gonna beat you tonight <laughs> yeah. oh, that's fine yeah that's probably good Get this show plus NXT retro reviews, wrestling reviews, movie reviews, and so much more over at patreon.com slash poison rana. And it's only five bucks, so what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for, huh? What are you waiting for? First time in a long time, but back like I never left. Taking these days as it comes, you know me, I don't read ahead. Watch me burn down everything, BBE on a TV set. When I'm in control on the road, you can never really know what's up next. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Braden Harrington here with Davey Portman for Up Next. You found us at postwrestling.com or whatever podcast app you are listening to us in right now. And of course, we are live on youtube.com slash postwrestling. Hello, postmarks. Hello, YouTubers. Hello, NXT friends. 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 And we are merely two weeks away, minus. Two weeks away before we can all stand and deliver. Yeah. Because it is WrestleMania season. I, I loved the the ongoing thread of tonight's episode of NXT. I'll get this out the way right away. It's stand and deliver season. It's stand and deliver season, right? They were Everyone's really favorite time of the year. They were really hitting that over the head tonight. And I was like, come on, that's is this why is that the name of the WrestleMania show? Why can't we just go back to the tape? It, it's time for them to stand up and deliver. And deliver. Yeah. Right, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I like how they uh, keep building. This is probably the biggest main event in Stan and Deliver's history. Right. Not takeover history, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Stan and, and Deliver, Deliver yes. history. Right. Uh, we're going to chat all about NXT from tonight. And yeah, n- there's only one more week after this before we go into WrestleMania weekend in Philadelphia. So yeah, we're, we're almost there. Wrestling. Yeah, it's hot right now. You've got a ticket for one night. I've got a ticket for the other night. Got a ticket to ride. We're trying to work out the other nights. Yeah. We're all good. Exactly. Uh, we are going to be uh, packing up and going to Philly in just a few weeks, like we said. And we're going to be hitting up all sorts of fun stuff. So follow the socials at Poison Rana Pod, Twitter, Instagram, because I know that we'll uh, be keeping busy in the next little while. I mean, we have been keeping busy recording a bunch of shows and uh, preparation and stuff, but... We're going to have a a wild time. We're going to be doing some road diaries. Mm -hmm. We're going to be going to check out some ECW tribute show at the ECW arena. Someone might die. Who knows? Yeah, it's it could be wild. Uh, We're going to a few indie shows and then we're going to Mania and then, of course, NXT. And of course, times to uh, time time allotted to hang out with uh, some of our friends out there as well. So it's going to be a wild weekend. It's two weeks away. I'm looking forward to it. It feels like it's not stopped, though. We just went to Dynamite. 
we're going we're, to collision. We're going to collision. It's it's busy. We've got a busy time ahead of us. It's all very very exciting. Yes, very exciting times. It's a uh, rainy evening here mm-hmm. on uh, in in Toronto, and we're inside and we're chatting about NXT. We are, yeah. How are you doing? I'm doing shit. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, we're gonna try and be all happy and stuff, but it's it's been a hell of a like. 24, 36 hours, I'd say. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I don't know where to where to start exactly. First, uh, some people who went to our wrestling karaoke said that they they got the the COVID bug. It wasn't sorry. It wasn't from the seven thousand people yeah. in the arena. It was from definitely, our event. It definitely was our was. event with thirty people. <laughs> it was definitely from there, right? <laughs> uh, so a few people got got sick. We're we luckily uh, we we're negative. Yeah, we got the COVID tests and we're okay. Oh, I'm negative today. Yeah. Yeah, we're very we'll be very negative. Not about the wrestling, just. Uh, uh, in life uh so we've uh we've dodged that bullet at least but then wish uh, the best to everyone who yes yes of course yeah it's still uh it's been it still it pops seems up to be these aew shows though right like it's I think, not i think yeah. john got sick at an aew show yeah you're Kate not got wrong. sick at an aew show yeah uh sloppy shot yeah everyone's <laughs> just getting getting yeah. the vid at the these shows but yeah so it started with that i mean we're okay mm-hmm. right that's the matter of thing uh, and then, uh, I mean, I don't know, without uh, going into full detail, the, the BDE mm-hmm. has taken a beating mm-hmm. in, uh, in one of the worst ways possible. We have uh, a, bit of a, a bit of a few visitors. Yeah, we got a, a little bit of a, a pest problem. Um, and so we spent most of last night <laughs> trying, to, trying to fix this. <laughs> and... Uh, it was getting later and later, and eventually we had to go to bed and be like, right, we got to call professionals about this. That's right. Um, then, so we've got them coming in on on Thursday, uh, but it's like a lot of stuff we need to get done before yes. then, like a, a real good clean of the place. We've got to pack things away. We There's a whole lot we need to do. And as I said, we're going to WrestleMania next week. We're going to Collision in London on Saturday. And we're both working pretty much every day until then. And we're recording a lot of stuff. So it's kind of just melting our brains a little bit, like trying to figure out how how many hours are in the day and how can we get this all done. Uh, But it will be sorted. Like it's, you know, it's a common problem. Like, but uh, it's nothing that bad. It's not honest. the end of the world, but it, it certainly added some stress to us. And I think both of us couldn't really sleep at all last night. I had to work today and was just a, a walking zombie uh, at work. Um, so, yeah. So, so that's part of it. So we're getting that sorted. Yeah. Yeah. So we got we're, we're fixing that issue probably more so tomorrow, today, tomorrow. I mean, one of the advantages of renting is you don't have to pay for this shit. Right? So that's <laughs> that's a good thing right? when you're not buying. But and then on top of that, I'm at uh, at work today and I'm already down in the dumps and I get an email from my bank going, hey, uh, you're like <laughs> way, way over withdrawn. I'm like, what? Oh yeah, sorry, I used that to get my mania yeah. tickets. So <laughs> no, I mean sure. I've been I've been saving up quite well the last couple of months like i i wasn't going out at all in january february i've been saving up quite nicely to to go to mania and i wanted to get a load of stuff out the way uh i was a little behind on my taxes so i caught up on all that uh and i paid that all off yesterday so i'm like good i'm i'm square i'm good what i go to mania with is my money and i can use it and spend it and then i've got the summer to kind of start saving again and i look at my bank account and i'm just like completely like maxed out <laughs> overdrawn and i'm like what's happened and i've seen the cra the the canada revenue agency yes have withdrawn what i own taxes twice <laughs> which is like nearly like 10 g's <laughs> <laughs> so i'm we're just about to open the bar and i just call my boss and i'm like i gotta i gotta be on hold for like the next hour until right. i talk to someone so I finally eventually get through to someone and they're like, you know, a million security questions first. And then, oh, yeah, I can see. I can see this. This payment's gone out twice. It was like, yeah. Uh, so just give it back to me. And 
He went, yeah, no, no, that's no problem. Uh, you'll get it back within two to three days after April the 2nd. Oof. So we're talking what, like Friday? Yeah. Two to three days, it's like Friday next week. And I was like, absolutely not. Sorry, you can't, like, I have no money. Rent comes out April 1st. Yeah. Like, I, you need to give that back. Well, it just, you know, it, it takes time for this to happen. No, it doesn't. It left my account an hour ago and you've already got my money. So just do the same, but backwards, you know? Yeah. Oh, well, uh, I'm not the one who uh, processes uh, things. I'm like, okay, can I talk to the person who processes things? And they go, no, well, it's an automatic thing. It's like, cool, I'll, I'll talk to someone higher up then. Uh, there is none. And I'm like, sorry, you're saying I was lucky enough to get through to the head of CRA today? That's what's happening? Well, no, no, sir. It's like, I need this money tomorrow morning by the latest. Figure it out. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll put you on hold. So eventually, like by the end of my shift, I saw it has hit my account again. But that was stressful. Yeah. On top of the uh, our little friends, and yeah. then on top of—is there one over there? I I use I see you glancing. I don't know. No, I think that's tape. What are you looking at? On your lazy boy. On my lazy boy. On the end of your lazy boy. Okay, one second. <laughs> oh. What is that? No, it's just praying. It's all good. <laughs> oh, it's just your lazy boy. Yeah, the, it's okay. just my old lazy boy. Uh, so our uh, lives have been fun. For yeah, the last like we're year. on edge, as you can see. Yeah. Uh, we're on like two hours sleep each, probably. Yeah, I didn't and then, sleep that much. And then we watched a bunch of NXT. Yeah. Um, so housekeeping, we were meant to be recording uh, our episode of Poison Profile this week, uh, covering Paul Heyman. And I think it's going to be a fantastic show. We've already started putting... The work and the research in uh i'm really looking forward to doing this one uh but it's just physically impossible for us to be able to do this before we go to wrestlemania uh so we're gonna leave it till after wrestlemania and you know what it might be a blessing in disguise because we're gonna see the the hopefully the the finale of the bloodline story which Heyman's very much involved in in and we're gonna have the um Hall of Fame induction. Yes. So it'll be a nice way to kind of round off that show with his like Hall of Fame speech and things that come out from that. So we are going to be pushing that one back. We are absolutely going to be doing that show. Uh, but that's probably going to be like the second week in April. Um, we'll still be releasing our WrestleMania 15 review, WrestleMania Philly. Um, that's we're right. We're going to be releasing that this weekend. We're going to have all our road trip diary entries uh, of WrestleMania weekend. So don't worry. You'll still be having plenty of content over at patreon.com slash poison rana. Yes. I mean, now's a, a time better than any other time because uh, we're going to WrestleMania. You ever wanted to buy us a beer? Buy yourself some podcasts and uh, keep yourself entertained. Whether you're traveling in for your flights, your drives, we'll keep you entertained. We just released a review of the most Philly movie of all time, even featured in today's episode oh, yeah. of NXT. We finally reviewed 1976. Rocky, mm -hmm. Sylvester Stallone, drinking eggs, punching meat. You've, yeah. all, you've all been there. So we're, we chatted all about it. And uh, it, it was a really fun review talking about this really iconic movie that like is always referenced in like everything and spawned a franchise that's still going today with the Creed movies. So that was a fun of time to chat about Sly and Rocky and all that. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I had a great time. It's my first time watching the film all the way through. Uh, but as you heard at the beginning of the show as well, we were also talking about New Jack punching meat in our <laughs> ECW Big Ass Extreme Bash 1996 review. Look, five bucks and it gets you a whole month's access of podcasts. But I'm telling you right now, five bucks is worth hearing Davey Portman recite word for word the New Jack promo from this show <laughs> that he will never ever repeat never ever, again. ever again so now's your time before he decides to take it down one day so definitely listen to this review we chat about chris, chris Jericho. it's going to be clipped out of context in about 10 years time where i'm very <laughs> successful and it's going to ruin my life isn't it? yeah probably yeah. uh we also talk about chris jericho versus taz which is great because we talked about jericho mm -hmm. and hook uh live in toronto last week but then uh rey mysterio and juventud guerrera in the iconic two out of three falls match with the Huracan Rana off the car. So, Ooh, yeah. And a whole lot more. Mick Foley's uh, goodbye from ECW as well as Shane Douglas, uh, Brian, 
Pillman and Raven and, and so many others. So that was a really fun show, actually, to go back and look at the ECW, like a classic Philly show, because we will be going to this venue as well. So that was a ton of fun. We just reviewed Rocky. We're just going to be reviewing WrestleMania 15. And then on top of that, we reviewed NXT TakeOver Philly. So did, yeah. super Philly. All we're missing is the cheesesteaks, but that's next oh, week. We're going to be uh, a walking cheesecake. Uh, cheesecake. <laughs> we're going to be a walking cheesecake. <laughs> cheesecake, cheesesteak, all of it. I've got some cheesecake in the fridge. Excellent. So better eat it before my pests do. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, so uh, we've had a whole lot of fun on the Patreon this month. It's only five bucks, as Braden said. Um, yeah, support your boys. We're also, I think, somehow going to be recording uh, a, a whole ton of these road diaries for all patrons as well in the next like week or, or two. So uh, over WrestleMania weekend, it'll definitely be a, a fun listen for you peeps out there. So give us a shot. And I think we might sneak in a behind the BDE tomorrow for our world champs as well. So yes. And uh, listen out if you are going to Philly to uh, Rewind a Smackdown and Rewind a Raw coming up because uh, I believe we might be announcing, you know, how you can hang out with us when we're in Philly. Yeah. Uh, we've got some things maybe in the works at very last minute, but uh, it would be great to see you all. Um, and uh, once that's finalized, I assume we'll have John Way confirm that on the flagship show that's right. on the Post Wrestling Network. Yes. Are uh, they are they are they doing okay after uh karaoke and their birthdays last week? They're recovering. They, they seem all right. Yeah. Yeah, they seem all right. Yeah, good, good. We had I, I for anyone who maybe didn't listen to Poison Rana on Sunday, which if you don't know what that is, search Poison Rana in your podcast feed or on YouTube and hit that subscribe. Davey and I go live every Sunday and we chat about all the other wrestling in the world, specifically AEW and main roster a lot right now and dark side lately as well. But uh, we we chatted about our karaoke party last week and shout out everyone who came, all the singers and, and everyone. It was, it was really awesome to see a lot of our listeners and people out there. So super appreciate you guys. But check out our, all our free shows as well, because we do have so many, so many podcasts and content. And I, I know Tuesdays as NXT ends, most people might be either listening to us or watching Dark Side of the Ring, which mm. I, I'm been really loving as as always. And we did get a chance to talk about that on, on that show. And and Dynamite, our live perspective for Edge and Christian and everything. So go check that show out if you haven't from Sunday. But yeah, lots of shows. Absolutely. Uh, if you are in London for Collision uh, this weekend, let us know. The real London. We are going to be making the trip to London, Ontario. My first time. Your first time in London. Ever in London. You sound like you're from London. Uh, so yeah, looking forward to that. Just hit us up. You know our socials. Yes. Um, and if you are in the Toronto area... The classic, the, we've made it, it's a year anniversary now of the rest, two year anniversary actually, of the WrestleMania watch parties. We'll be doing it once again at Gabby's. We've got some very trustworthy friends uh, flying the Poison Rana banner at Gabby's, 309 King Street West. Uh, tickets are sold out for both these nights, but there is going to be limited availability on the door. Um, so uh, hit us up. We can... Like if you if you're a listener of the show, we can probably work out a way to get you on a waiting list or something. Uh, but yeah, they're going to be a whole lot of fun. Um, it sold out really quickly this year. Very excited, and uh, we do also have uh, space on the patio this time of year. It could be a beautiful 24 degree day, or it could be minus 24. You really have no idea in Canada in April. That's right. Um, so dress warm if you are going to make the trip for. Uh, door seats because uh there is a chance you could be watching outside if you wish um, yes but yes we are sold out but we can still probably sneak you in on excellent yes yeah, so it's gonna be it's gonna be busy I, I feel like this is the most like hyped up mania in in quite a long time a lot of the the casual fans are creeping back out into the like oh what's going on with the rock and all oh, this yeah. kind of stuff so i feel like this will be one of the most watched manias and it's the most talked about one in, in quite a long time. So it certainly feels that way. Yeah. Uh, we see uh, RY in the chat saying, screw the CRA. Yes. <laughs> and also says that uh, London, Ontario is, I think he says, is the greatest London in the world. So All right. uh, possibly okay. we'll have to, uh, he didn't say that, but wow. I, I, he says our con his condolences that we're going to London. I'm looking for, I like seeing different places. <laughs> I do. Uh, well, Look at you now. Look at me. Look at you now. Look at you now, boy. Look at you now, boy. Look at you now. Look at you now. Uh, before NXT, yeah, let's talk about some some main roster stuff because 
last night, as you kind of mentioned, we uh, we don't always hang out on Monday nights like we we sometimes do. But Raw is is in full gear. Cody Rhodes was going to speak his his mind, and uh, we were kind of rearranging our living room and stuff. So we decided to throw Raw on later on in the night, kind of on delay. And I got to say, as someone who definitely doesn't check out as Raw, as really is something as of important viewing until you tell me like, oh, you should really like watch mm. this this promo or John away or rave about it, something. Then I check it out. We kind of watched the whole show and I thought from top to bottom, it had like some, some really good stuff and specifically like two promo segments, which I feel like everyone's talking about. Absolutely. From last I mean, night. this is the first time you've really watched because you, you do, you, you watch the stuff on, on YouTube and Twitter and things, but this is the first time you've really watched it front to back. And you really noticed all the kind of production elements. Yeah. And just, you know, the, the 2K ranking system and it's the great. different camera shots and things like that. And it does, it just feels fresher and more exciting these days. And Monday nights recently, I've been lying low. I've been staying in. I've been enjoying just cooking some food and watching Raw. And I've got to say, I think it's it's probably the best show WWE is putting out at the moment, which goes completely against everything we've said for the last like decade, it feels, mm-hmm. since it's t- turned to three hours. But it's really starting to click. And obviously, it is WrestleMania season. Things are more exciting but i've been enjoying it and uh yeah i mean should we start with the uh like seth drew punk promo? yeah 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 for sure i really think drew mcintyre has stepped up i mean even before raw going on the air he made a stop in chicago to mindy's mm. the the muffin yep. place which right away that gave me such Closed a great... on mondays Oh yeah. yeah, poor guy. He didn't get his Mondays, but uh, he he then comes out, and him Punk had definitely a, a nice back and forth with Punk bringing up who who called you the chosen one. I I love that. I mean, it was clearly the whole segment was clearly like bullet points and just riffing off of them, not not entirely scripted, and it made it feel awkward at times but so much more realistic than the classic wwe speak and it just seemed like three people getting at each other and that line oh you're the chosen one who called you that right called, oh a uh, uh, paragon of virtue i'm sure <laughs> called you that and drew just with this look like you bastard yeah <laughs> you got me there you got me that one um, i mean drew really cooked him with a few lines as well oh, like yeah. I, he had me rolling with like for a guy who doesn't drink or do drugs, you sure are in rehab a whole lot, yeah. <laughs> which was very funny. So I, I did enjoy, like Drew is to to be on that level with yeah. with the CM Punk. I thought CM Punk felt a bit off last night. Actually, I, I know they're in Chicago. He gets a huge reaction. He's wearing his bicentennial arm or whatever mm-hmm. the hell he's on. Got on and. I felt like he ch- he kept trying to cue the crowd and they weren't listening. I, I feel that, yeah, the crowd maybe weren't entirely sure how they were meant to react about certain things because, which I think in a way made this segment even better for me. It made right. it more exciting because it was clear these three guys were improvising to try and get it back on track, which is by the end of this promo segment, we're going to know that CM Punk's on commentary. Right. But you had at points like, Seth going like, Chicago, do you want CM Punk on commentary? And they're all like, eh, yeah. not really. Yeah. Referee, referee. And then Punk's proving he can referee. And then it's like, no, 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 I can't. I can't do yeah, that. That was good. And there were a couple of times where Punk tried to queue up them. Say my name. Say my name, CM Punk. And there's a bit where Drew's talking and it's clear Punk was expecting them to be chanting and he's going, I can't hear over all these cheers, but they were just listening to Drew. <laughs> so he's just like, I can't hear you stood here in the ring. So get your ass in here. Yeah. But I thought it made it just like really like fun TV and so different from what you're used to with WWE. And I'm, I take this style of segment and not everyone is going to be good at it. Some people are completely going to crash and burn. But I take this way, way more over the, like, I speak, I say my catchphrase, I say WWE Universe and kick your ass. And then you go, whoa, 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 whoa. And then I say my things. And, like, I'd much rather this. And I think it it just felt spiky and exciting. Yeah, it definitely felt maybe a bit more off the cuff, a bit more freedom to do what they wanted in this segment. I think 
in the end, like obviously you want to see Punk versus Drew. You you still want to see Seth versus Punk, but yeah. like we're not getting that match, and it's it's just Punk injured on commentary, which they might even flip to him being a ref after this. They've done a know. great job this year of building Punk versus Drew for night one yeah. and Cody versus Rock for night two. Yeah. They've done a fantastic job of that. So yeah, <laughs> like I, I felt I felt Punk was like it's it's a bit like he's hey chicago i'm i'm here make sure you buy my merch and like it's yeah. it's kind of like he he's still coming across cheap to me this this version of punk and i know the injury it sucks but like that's part of it like mm. you came in here and you're fucking injured off not even a, one match so like it's a little like rocky and then there were glim like the vince line the jim Cornette line there were definitely glimpses of well yeah the old yeah, so what he's telling he's telling people he doesn't listen to Pat McAfee, but he listens to Jim Cornette. Yeah, yeah great advice there, <laughs> Punk. You definitely you had me for a second, and then you lost me a little bit more there. But yeah, I still I still thought the uh, the segment was great, and and shockingly, like uh, Drew is the one that I'm like, hey, like it helped bring you up to their like level at this point. At this point, I don't even know if he's a heel because <laughs> he's really just. Speaking the truth. Yeah, but, absolutely. But yeah, really like that one. But then, uh, I mean, we started with Cody Rhodes cutting a promo, which I thought he was talking that talk with uh, bringing up some lines about like the guy asking to be his best man and that Brandy, I'm going to go do it. I don't even know who this guy is, but I'm going to do it because that's what a champion does. But I'm not even the champion. Oh, wait, where is the champion? Oh, yeah, he's not here. But I do the champion stuff because really I should have won last year. At WrestleMania, so I yeah. just go on business pretending that I did until I get the title from you. I Next dress week. like a champion. Yeah, yeah. He's always been. Yeah, I dress for the job you want, right? I I love that so much, and I thought that him calling out The Rock and Roman with their little and I quote wank fest mm -hmm. was also a very fun line. So I thought he was scorching them, and then The Rock makes an appearance, which, like, he wasn't advertised, and obviously it was sold out already. You advertised Punk in chicago they yeah. shift these tickets products hot right now so you didn't need to advertise rock which just made it more exciting i think yeah. it was a genuine surprise his music hit and i was like oh he's they're trolling his and entrance then, he appears like thanos or something yeah. it's like the, he, he comes out of nowhere yeah. it's very cool um so yeah rock comes whispers in cody's ear what did he whisper uh, it's like lost in translation twitter twitter translators saying, what did he whisper he said, I'll make you bleed. Yeah. I, the, the funny thing of watching wrestling and internet is like, huh, I go onto Twitter after watching this promo and I see someone go, I'm a lip reader. And The Rock said, I'll make you bleed. And then everyone just believes that. I was like, yeah, sure. I believe it. And then, well, The Rock told the truth because in a in a shocking kind of return there of, of things like this raw felt like everything kind of flowed because then you had Heyman talking to Drew to in the Drew. background. And then it kind of goes on like, oh, something's off here tonight, boys. And then like the bloodline shows up and then it was all a trap for the final boss, The Rock, to attack Cody Rhodes. Look at you. Look at you now. Look at me now. Hey. Uh, so he beat the shit out of him and made him bleed. And mm -hmm. he told Mama Rhodes that I'd be giving you a belt with Cody's blood on it. And he was telling the truth. This was one of the best ending segments to Raw and like easily years for me like this had everything it didn't just have the rock smacking around cody he didn't even have to do too much just throw him into the wall a couple times his bus whatever but the trash talking the swearing and the rain <laughs> the rain just added to it like seeing a man have his shirt ripped off his back bleeding look at you now boy in the rain was just awesome and yeah i i just thought the, the whole show as you said kind of flowed it had this great moment at the the end um also people are pointing out the the truck with cena and the rock uh, sorry cena and austin yeah on it uh two big wrestlemania rivals of the rock are we getting the the avengers all showing up through the portals everyone who wronged uh who the roman rock. and rock have fucked over appearing to help Cody get his money. Yeah, we were talking about this on Sunday on Poison Rana, and we were talking about how they'll probably do the similar thing to WrestleMania 30, where they have like a few stars open the show. Mm. And I think Cena and Austin need a moment together. And I, I think maybe that was just a little bit of a Easter egg that like, hey, they're going to be on the show. Like, I wonder now if you just keep it for the, for that main event. Bloodline rules. I think we saw a glimpse of what bloodline rules could be. 
right. with this, uh, they're starting to move. Like if Punk's line about Netflix is anything to go by, maybe we are moving into a bit more of a mature product. Like SmackDown could stay sort of PG-13 or whatever on on TV, yeah. on USA. But on, War Net Zone. on Netflix, it's a little bit yeah. grittier. You can drop some F-bombs, you can bleed and stuff like that. And maybe this rock beatdown is a glimpse of what Bloodline rules could be. Obviously, you're going to have your your solo Sokoas, your Jimmy Usos, all of that being involved. Uh, maybe some other Samoans involved as well. Extended family. Yeah, I mean, Rikishi's coming out night one, hopefully, mm -hmm. if, with uh, his kids, the Usos. I need that moment. But I'm wondering if we get some, some turns here. Because, yeah, after watching The Rock beat up Cody Rhodes, it's like, wow, I am really excited for Cody versus Rock. But then that's not the match. It's the tag match, but you're still getting Cody and Rock in the match. So really, you are still getting that match. But either way, that was one of the best. Like, it felt so, I guess, the swearing and the rain and the blood and everything. It felt so not a kid product mm. anymore. Like, right? So I was genuinely into it. Yeah, I think having seen her in Austin helping Cody. What, they're going to come out of the teleport, the you portals? Have, yeah, have Austin for the save off the stunner one more time. Right. Uh I wonder if I don't think The Rock can do that back, back flip thing. Yeah, no, nah, yeah. Uh, AA to Roman. I don't know. Rose, I, I one, just two, three. I just see Austin and Cena like opening the show of Mania. Like, hey, like how they did with. That's what Vince would have done. But what uh, Triple H I just do? don't understand why Austin and Cena would be like, I got to get in there to to stop The Rock to help Cody. Austin, like one of Austin's favorite wrestlers ever, is Dusty Rhodes. He right. talks about it in, in interviews. But so is The He's Rock. Like, what got Austin into wrestling was seeing. The free birds, wasn't it? Like beating down on, on Dusty. Right. Like that was a big moment. He was like, Whoa, they're beating up Dusty. That Austin's always said in interviews, that was something that got me. So away. he has to stop Dusty's and Austin, kid. And Austin has all that history with The Rock. Cena's got the history with Roman and The Rock. Right. And like, you want to make it feel the biggest mania of all time, having your main event of night two featuring Roman, Cody, Rock, Austin, Jimmy, right. Jay like seth it's all a, of them it just, i think it i think that could be pretty awesome i think it's because a few weeks ago you revisited sting versus triple h where everyone just yeah. came out <laughs> so maybe you were great. inspired by that but i mean i don't know if that's gonna happen but maybe seth turn could happen maybe something's you know something's not not right something's off mm. maybe seth is like you know what cody screw you man but really he sh i hope that doesn't happen and in fact i still think the rock will turn and somehow cost roman the title in when I, it all said and done i feel you i feel they'll keep him as a heel i feel it will be rock cody at saudi or something like that later the, the so title. he can take the title off cody yeah maybe why well, <laughs> he pins him night one so he has that claim <laughs> yeah that's right all i know is like yeah I, i've definitely been a broken record for the last weeks and maybe months now but like can't really say the rock was like the the interest mm -hmm. of like coming back to wrestling and it's just completely took me by surprise and like I, I i find it so great from his twitter stuff social media stuff to to this specific like angle where like they set a trap and and he was there and he didn't say anything the first time he came out and then he's still there as a surprise like just thought they're they're really they're really hitting on all cylinders for wrestlemania in a few weeks so i i know this this clip was going everywhere of him like staring at the camera and mama Rhodes, mm. look at him now so just Good stuff. And I'm 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 excited because The Rock, I don't know what he can actually physically do in a match, but will he last longer than CM Punk? We shall see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh I enjoyed the I'm still enjoying the Sammy Gunther Chad Gable stuff as well. But he lost. So yeah. Bronson at the end as it cuts away with no nothing that ever comes of it. Bronson's just like, so am I going to WrestleMania now? Nah, nah, Bronson. <laughs> Sorry. You man. didn't even go to Australia, mate. Like, <laughs> uh yeah, I mean, it's good for getting in his head. And yeah. and yeah, Sammy, like, Chad needs to keep him on track. Right. Gable's going to be his, his Mickey here. It's Mickey. Right? Yeah, that's right. Um, no, I'm, I'm enjoying that. Again, like, it, it's just feeling a bit more natural, that feud. A little less, like, cliche, yeah. I think. Uh, I'm enjoying that. I thought Becky sounded great. Uh, yeah, I like the Rhea-Becky Rhea. stuff as well. I think that match could be really good as well. I think Becky beats Rhea as well, actually. Yeah, I'd go that way. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I thought it was a, a really enjoyable Raw last week. And we've got one more. 
One more, two more raw. Smackdowns, one more raw. Two more so smack. Man. So yeah, what's on? We have some like face to faces coming up. I, I think again, right? Like Roman needs to do something. Roman's just like yeah. So chilling. the next next raw is in New York, isn't it? Is it Barclays or MSG? It might be MSG. I think it's Brooklyn. Is it Brooklyn? Yeah. Right. Yes, Barclays. So uh, the Rock's going to be on. I think Roman's going to be on. Like it's yeah. gonna be a big big show again. Ro- Roman week. needs to show up, doesn't he? He needs to do something. Yeah, you've got a match. Do more than you're an idiot. <laughs> yeah, just. Do something more yeah. than that. Uh, but yeah, that's that's been good. And they're really they're really cooking up for WrestleMania. Like all these matches sound pretty good. And they're it's gonna be a big one. It feels like a really big one. It feels like there's a lot of energy and 40th anniversary, whatever you want to call it. It's mm. it's good times. I'm really excited about what's happening in uh soft ground wrestling Uganda with uh Lord White. He might okay. be taking the big strap there. For oh. anyone who doesn't know the you gotta follow soft ground wrestling on on social media because these guys on Triller. Uh, i don't think so I, i've just watched their videos on twitter which is like mm-hmm. they they wrestle yeah, on, their Instagram. on the ground but the big bad heel is this british white guy lord white right who might be you know might be in for a big reign of terror over there mm-hmm. so you got to follow that as well uh other things i watched i'm trying to think um I went to, I mentioned I went to Demand Lucha uh, on Thursday. That was a, a whole fun time. And I know they have a show in a few months coming up, but already announcing some stuff. So you'll definitely see us at the next one. Uh, I'm trying to think of uh, of what else I've uh, watched this week. Oh, when our friend Eric was over, yeah. we watched Madame Webb. Yeah, and then he bought his fucking Sudbury pests with him. <laughs> You're going to blame Eric? <laughs> they weren't here before he was here. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not the. That's not what. Maybe it was Madame Web curse. Yeah. Somehow, uh, but yeah, that one of the one I don't of know, a spider would help. Right now, a spider would definitely help. A nice Madame Web yeah. of one. Sorry, I'm just getting undressed. Oh yeah, yeah, go for it. Uh, but this was just one of the like best movies I've ever yeah. seen ever. Possibly, it was so bad and so funny that I genuinely recommend it for a good time. Okay. That's like honest reviews. Like, you want some laughs? You'll probably get them out of this movie. As me and Eric just had a wonderful afternoon watching this film, so definitely nice. would recommend that as well. So good stuff. Uh, yeah, I think that's all. Oh, the last thing we talked about this in a at least on Sunday. For the past few weeks, we've been joking. Where's Kate? Mm. And I mean, now it's come out. Some people still don't believe yeah. this, but you can you can you can put that to your own things, your own ways here. But Kate Middleton, the the princess. Wait, what is she? Yeah, princess. princess. She she says she's not missing, she's not dead, but she has cancer. So that kind of puts a little damper on the party yeah. of everyone being like, ah, these are the conspiracy theories. So it went from where's Kate to where's Diddy is where we're at now. But all the all the best to Kate Middleton. Because mm-hmm. we we uh, hope she's okay, even though legit you search, people think is AI of this video, which is nuts. But uh, the Diddy stuff is now the new craze. So that's right. the whole that's the one I'm watching because this thing's gonna get crazier and crazier. Where P Diddy's houses, think of that, three different houses at the exact same time were raided. His kids raided, but somehow Diddy was able to sneak away on a plane and go to a country that doesn't have a what bring you back kind of thing. So. Just that's the, that's an interesting that's story. How, are, <laughs> how is this guy just like ain't nobody gonna hold him down running away in plain sight? Meanwhile, over here, the government's taking 10k out of my account, yeah, yeah, like just priorities, people. So, I mean, Diddy seems like there's gonna be a lot that kind of comes out about him, but there's always been stuff about him. Uh, has way too many photos with Vince McMahon. Mm. There, that's all you need to yeah. know about P. Diddy, but holy crap, just uh. Like and, and one of my favorite movies used to be Get Him to the Greek, and it's just not been a really good year nah. for, <laughs> for fans of that movie. So yeah, uh, so Diddy Watch is is the new one. So yeah. if anyone's seen Diddy, let us know. All right. Well, shall we get into some NXT? Yes, I think it's time. I think we talked about everything else now. Let's talk about some NXT wrestling from Tuesday, March twenty sixth, two thousand twenty four. Two weeks away from Stand and Deliver. And we start off here with our opening match, a quasi number one contender for the North American title. Yeah, we had these two matches tonight that said had uh, US, sorry North American title implications, but they never officially called them a number one contender yeah. or anything. 
But we start off here with Jack out for justice here tonight, taking on the chairman, Sean Spears. So uh, these two go at it. It's Sean who gets sent to the outside here, and Jack hits this tope, almost missing him here. It was very scary for a second, but he's all right. Uh, he gets back in the ring and hits this, like, rope twisting splash thing when I right away realized that the booing guy in the NXT crowd is back. Oh, yeah. Just the guy who just boos. Specifically, Dijak is when I noticed it, mm. to be honest. But he does this a lot. And, man, just, like, why are you even going to these shows if that's all you're, you're going to do at these shows? It's just, ah, oh, boo. Stop, man. I'm trying to watch the show. It's You wouldn't hear it in an arena, but in these studio it's like, settings. It's yeah, so there's, like, no one there. So, Dijak's beating down on Spears. Eventually, there's a German off the top from Sean where Dijak does, like, a full rotation for a near fall, which is great. Uh, Spears has his chair set up ringside, but we kind of see Joe Gacy as the the Joker or the Riddler kind of sneaking around ringside. But it's Sean Spears who doesn't kind of see him. Uh, eventually, there's Dijak who gains control and hits the flying clothesline, very much like Kane, and then hits the running clothesline, very much like The Undertaker. And then a discus boot, but Spears kicks out. Somehow, they climb to the top again and hit. There's a superplex from Spears, but Dijak hits the hard justice and spears kicks out of it but then he goes for the chair again but this time he doesn't realize that gacy has now taken the chair so what is the chairman without his chair mm. just a man as he turns around and he is hit with the feaster eyes as dijack puts him away to win this match which at least dijack won yeah uh yeah i thought you know these are two vets uh Two pros going at it. They got the crowd behind them. Uh, it was pretty hard hitting. Um, don't really know, you know, on NXT what it particularly serves when it's veteran v veteran in a way. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, but uh, I'm glad they went with Dijak. I thought it was a pretty good opener here. Uh, I, I'm finding it hard to really get invested in anything Sean Spears, but I have been enjoying Dijak's work in NXT. Yeah, you know what? Dijak is... I've, I've always been a fan pre-WWE, but he's always kind of lacked like what the character was. And now he's found this really ridiculous Terminator mm. boss man style thing. And I... Classic NXT, they just beat me into submission. And like now I'm just like, yeah, it's just your character. Yeah. Just go to the main roster. And I feel like with this iteration of him would do a lot better than the last attempt that he had because I, I really do like this guy and I'm happy that he won this match. I think he'll do some wild stuff at this stand and deliver match just to oh, yeah. just to prove it and i have been a fan of his uh social media game as well lots of push dijack signs tonight in yeah. the crowd and on raw last night as well uh and then yeah i kind of agree with what you said sean spears it's like yeah i don't really know why you're here in nxt and not really interested already and you're just doing the aw gimmick so mm. I guess we're going to a Gacy feud as we'll see later, but not not a bad match. Don't get me wrong. Crowd were really yeah. into it as well. Crowd except that happy. one guy. Yeah, really hated it. Uh, after the match, Gacy's in the chair. It, sorry, in the ring now, swinging the chair around like the Joker would do with a machine gun. As uh, Dijak's a little confused, but like, all right, you helped me win. So I guess they're kind of friends now, as we presumed. We see a video for Roxanne Perez, and she's watching back her her rookie year here in NXT. She's watching back her, her promos about riding the bus and working hard. And, and she's like, oh, this makes me sick. These videos of myself, look at me. I was just trying to make people like me and I don't do that anymore. And I was wrong to do that. And I was the one to carry the torch, the new era of NXT. But now I just look out for myself and it seems to be working because all I did was whatever I wanted, and somehow now I got what I want, and that's the NXT title shot. So, Lyra, you think I don't like you. That's not true. I don't like you. I don't hate you. I really don't care about you. The only thing is you're the one holding my title, and I'm going to take it back at Stand and Deliver. I like the line, and you're barely doing that because she's been attacking the other. Right. Uh, yeah, I, I think Rox, uh, Roxy's been really working in this in this new heel uh, role and I, I am looking forward to this match. Yeah, this this makes a lot of sense. And actually, it got like the best thing you could do with her was because, like, yeah, I think she's outgrown that like little girl character that they were going for with like her and her. Like, look at my drawings. Oh, here was where I used to play 2K, and like now she's watching this. Like, oh, 
I was so stupid and naive. Yeah. I kind of like the evolution of the the character. So I think the match will be a lot better than the last time these two got to wrestle. So that's in two weeks. We see Hank and Tank backstage. They're singing. I could be wrong, but they re- they reference Taylor Swift, and they're like, maybe we're not quite on their level. Apparently, there's auditions hmm. for the host of Stand and Deliver. So Hank and Tank are thinking of auditioning since they lost their match last week. We see Brinley Reese with Malik and Idris. They're gonna Brinley Reese saying she uh, she gave it a million percent. So right. She she's happy, and you see uh andre chase who thinks he's nailed it he comes out and he goes uh, the, the like producer goes like oh how did it go and andre goes i killed it and he goes all right all right who's next and chase is like next what what do you mean next no no no, no. i killed it therefore like give me the part me. and the guy's like oh and he puts the the clipboard out of his his hand so yes a host of stand and deliver we go to our next match though thea hale taking on a, i think the nxt in-ring debut of jasmine nix mm-hmm. here so jasmine's been hanging around the mean girls of chase U with jc jane and thea is kind of left them it's one of those uh nxt names i've always got to check spelling as yeah I'm, as i'm writing up like the show description jasmine nix with two eyes Jasmine M Y N and Nix N Y X. Really? It's like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> like, one of the more normal names on the roster, Jasmine, Jasmine Nix, just spelt ridiculously. You could just check the calendar. It's yeah. got, her, got her name in it. That's true. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So she's making her debut here. They mention on commentary, shout out Vic Joseph and Booker T. They mention uh, Jasmine being a former soccer star in West Virginia on, mm-hmm. uh, on a school team there. So good for her. Maybe she, the NIL. Right, through and past him. Yeah, exactly. So this match starts off. Uh, Thea is just running at her like a rocket here. She's attacking Jasmine. She's angry at her. Hits an exploder out of the corner for a near fall. Somehow JC distracts Thea, and there's a roll up for Nick's for a t- by Nick's for a two count. Uh, eventually, Thea comes back with this jumping, spinning neck breaker for a near fall. But Nick's comes in showing the soccer skills. A bit of a penalty kick for a near fall. Uh, and then JC throws in the towel and kind of laughs, which is a throwback to Chase throwing in the towel for Thea. Yeah. And this time, though, Riley runs in the ring and catches the towel and says, no, 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 the match is still on. I believe the ref was, like, distracted as well. So yeah. we have seen who threw in the Chase U towel. Yeah. So, and, and then, then sees Riley's in the ring. Yeah. So tells Chase U to get out of there. But really, it was the other people that were getting involved. So they all go to leave. And then... Thea's on the apron staring at JC, and JC says, I was never your friend, and slaps Thea Hale. Roll up by Nix, but she counters it at the last second into the Kimura, and Nix taps out, and right after, Thea doesn't let go and kind of snaps the arm of Jasmine Nix. Very Brock Lesnar, Shawn Michaels, yeah. Triple H. Yeah, of. I was wondering if they were going to reverse the decision because she kind of yeah. did it after the bell, but they didn't go that way. Uh, I've been really impressed with Thea in ring recently. I think she's got some really good speed about her. I uh, I like the Kimura as a finish. It's a little less conventional for a character of her type, but it it really works. Um, it gets a it gets very over the top. The whole I I don't particularly like the the dialogue in in matches. Right when it's some people are good at it and make it seem natural. Others feel like very, oh, we stop and pause and have our little acting moment. And it felt a little over the top. Well, it was over the top yeah, here yeah. between her and JC. Um, but uh, I thought Jasmine like looked pretty good as well for a first match. I thought, uh, yeah, I, I didn't think she sort of looked out of place here and yeah, she's she, with her. Yeah, she's been in the background for like quite a while now. Mm. She's legit just been a calendar girl. She's yeah. been pretty much like this good looking girl that they've had in the back. And this was her first match on NXT TV. So it didn't necessarily do a bad job. I think the more of the story was here for Thea to kind of continue this yeah. feud. After the match, Kiana and Izzy come out and they start all beating down on Thea Hale when out comes Fallon Henley and Kalani Jordan for the save which we imagine this goes to some sort of multi, like tag match at the pay-per-view or next yeah, week. Or... I wonder if this is like, a, I, it's really early for a, a pre-show, but I know they have done them before. Oh that yeah, it shows at little, 12 o'clock, yeah, 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 noon. So whether they throw this on the, the pre-show, I can't necessarily see it on the main, but 
maybe you've only got one wins match. It's a way of getting a lot more on the card. Um, do you see there being uh, it being a a six woman, or does do the baby faces get another person on their team to make it four and four? Right. So who do we have? Well, you've got uh, JC, uh, Kiana, Izzy, and potentially Jasmine as right. well. Right. But I maybe the maybe the Kimura writes her out. Maybe she's injured now. Yeah. When you do the three on three. Yeah, that would be a good angle for her as well. But yeah, I, I, I imagine we see that down the line. But yeah, we go to our prime target in three parts mm -hmm. kind of split we haven't had one of these in a little while but pretty cool that they brought it back and this is all about the story of trick williams and carmelo hayes and it shows different interviews uh cutting to different people whether it's trick mellow and some other faces and it starts off by saying we've been boys from the start with every victory every success and trick says he's always been there for carmelo hayes we see interviews from people like Booker T, mm -hmm. very like happy and supporting Trick. You know, he's he's his guy. He's like, you know, this is a, a rivalry. These two have been friends and now they're they're fighting each other. You hate to see it. Cuts to CM Punk, mm -hmm. who's just like, Yeah, you know, Trick Williams is gonna whoop that trick. He's gonna I mean Punk's been hanging out at NXT a lot, hasn't it? And then it cuts to Randy Orton, who Randy, say something about takeover. Sorry, stand and deliver. Yeah, it's uh, it's next weekend. <laughs> I mean, it, it's I think it's clear when when Randy was away, he was he was pumping weights and watching NXT during his whole injury time. This got, got really into this one was fine, but it was the one later where it's like, dude, you don't you don't know what you're talking. Yeah. You didn't you didn't ask. You don't know who these people are. You're lying. Like they were pretty much like, so what's going on with the the storyline with Trick and and Mello? Who do you think is gonna win? Ah, uh, you know, it, it could be, it could go either way. It could really, it's next week though. And I'm really excited. It was like, I don't know if you watched the show, Randy. Uh, there is then uh, Mello who says, look, Trick, I led you to water. I let you eat off my plate. And you keep saying that this was a we thing, but it wasn't. It was a me plus you thing. And after Stand and Deliver, your 15 minutes are up. They showed the very first... Uh clip from the first episode of 2.0 yeah where it was basically like trick saying like i've got your back yeah. all the time and he's like you're a liar because then you you wanted more and it's like you should have always been just right. having my back and helping me uh yeah i i'm sure i mean we're gonna break down the other two but i like these prime target things i like the the talking heads um i i i like when they used to like release the whole thing on the network yeah like a, a or youtube like 20 30 minute version and then do the abridged version because we get it like we get the training videos and stuff i wanted to see more of them like in their hometown and them like yeah as themselves who they are and what this match means to them um they do the whole like you know epic trailer rain and fancy graphics Lights. and standing in philly and the the trailer music they do all that really well these are really well produced but I would have liked to dove even deeper into maybe their relationship off screen. Yeah. Like, and how they've been like, whether it's been like mellow helping tri trick train in the, in the PC or, uh, I mean, they, they've said on camera, like, Oh, we were friends since school, which I assume is kayfabe, but right. you know, what? Like, digging a little deeper into their, their relationship from what we've seen. But, I always like these prime target things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I thought these were really good, but my one critique would be like, hey, a little bit more of like a backstory. It goes into tricks a bit, I'd say, a bit more than Carmelo's, but still like show a little. They they used photos where they sh it showed them younger. I don't know when these photos were from, but they, they use a lot of photos and videos, but I felt like the one thing I would have put in is a bit more of like the, the story is like, hey, CM Punk, you know, these guys used to be friends. What's What's going to happen? I, I don't care what CM Punk has to say about this because like he hasn't been on this fucking mm. show. Where if you then cut to like tricks, I, like parents, the the the, well, the coach, really like later on you've got like this NFL. Player, yeah, yeah. Got his boxing coach. Yeah, when it goes into that, that, I'm like, that, yeah, I want to know what you more think. Of that. I don't give a fuck about Randy or Randy or doesn't even know who these people are. I'd rather hear Mellow's barber. You know? Yeah, <laughs> I I think that was my one critique. Because as as awesome as this was, and definitely would recommend. I'm sure they'll put it all together for their their socials and stuff. The one like takeaway uh, that negative was like oh like a bit more of that. Well, it might have been the first one they did, but it was 
was it Gunther and Bait they did, or Gunther Ilya? They did one of these, and you had, you know, Gunther training in Germany, and you saw him at his like school and all that stuff. Yeah, of thing. yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, but yeah, don't don't get me wrong, I like this. I still like it, yeah. Dig, dig deeper. Uh, there have been reports out, obviously, Mello did kind of get a like a quiet call up to SmackDown earlier in the year, obviously, as he's completing this feud he's in nxt full-time and the plans are to call him up after mania um but there is talks as well apparently when trick was on smackdown with Mello, his reaction really turned heads and uh it could be the first time we get maybe a feud call up hmm. to the main roster which i kind of be for because we've we've seen before where they've like tried to recreate feuds yeah. from nxt and normally these, you know, if I'm if we're talking about like uh like Johnny Gargano Champa or or Kyle Adam Cole, they tend to go in threes. And I think it could be a really good way to try and debut it. Like yeah, they've it, never it would done take that. some work to like educate, you know, non-NXT viewers, but these two are both so charismatic and trick, I think, can win over a crowd with a promo very quickly and mellow to an extent. Yeah, and if these match matches cook as well, I think that could be really interesting to see. Obviously, there's going to be more synergy between Triple H's main roster and Sean's NXT than there was in the previous regime. So, I'd I'd be down for that rather than having this feud kind of stretch over the next three four months in in NXT. I'd have this main event stand and deliver, and then call them both up. Yeah, Mello comes out and Trick interrupts him. And be like, Mello, oh. Mello could win yeah. the, the first match. Okay. And then and then comes out on SmackDown and is like, I want to stand and deliver, do the whole gloating thing. And Trick comes up and he's like, ah, well, look who else has got a SmackDown contract. And I've actually got a match set with you. And I'm Oh, but Trick's got to win this one. I think this. I think uh, Trick beats him and then beats Ilya for the title okay. at the, the next one, at the, whatever that may be. And maybe he does stick around for just a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. But but your way is great too. Something that like I don't want to say sucks when it compares NXT to main roster because we've seen in the past where it's like you can't now do this storyline on the main roster because yeah. we just we're going through it right now. There's you, a line from Johnny later, which is it's funny because yeah. him and Champ are yeah. teaming at WrestleMania, and he's like, uh, you know what? Once your friend stabbed you in the back, there's you no can, going back. There's no going back. <laughs> it's like, dude, you're in WrestleMania you're with him. <laughs> you no, know, you're, you're with, with him, him again. Yeah, there's something about like oh, like main roster viewers some people will never want to go back and watch nxt let alone like go back and watch older mm -hmm. stuff but like too bad the gargano champa feud wasn't on the main roster because no now it's just like oh why who are these two guys like yeah. why do they why are they team who are these people it's kind of weird something i bring up is the santos phantom gimmick where yeah. he had the mask like imagine that storyline on the just main roster it, it would have been an amazing way to bring people in but any like i i, I think you're right like trying to bring this feud maybe onto the main roster could work, but you still have to introduce people because they're going to, they could be still cold I mean, you characters. Can, you can do it as well. You can have uh trick, have a, a little run with the title and then right. come up for like SummerSlam season, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. It'd be, it'd be cool, but I, I am looking forward to this match, but there is two more parts to this one as well down the line, which they get even better, but we go backstage and we see alpha Academy. We see Otis calling Maxine, my dove, again, love it. He's in the gym. They're working out because they have a match tonight. And if they win, they are added to the stand and deliver match for tag titles. And they say that they're very adamant that tonight they will beat the Wolf Dogs. And Tazawa says, we will go to stand and deliver. Stand and deliver season. Stand and deliver season, yeah. Baby. We see Lola Vice, who comes out. She's got a microphone. And she, too, says it's stand and deliver season. Just rolls off the tongue. She says that she's here in NXT and she's going to prove that she's the baddest because her strikes, her hands, everything. And she's going to throw an open challenge here tonight. So anyone out there can come out and face me. And out comes Natalia Neidhart. Yay. I always think it's Bret Hart coming out when mm. she comes out. Natalia comes out and she says, look, Lola, I see a lot in you. And I see you're the future. You do have talent. You are going to be something. But right now, I'm going to put you in your place. And 
Then they start fighting and it's a match. And these two go back and forth as we come back from a commercial break. Natty is in control, beating down on Lola Vice, uh, Vice here. Uh, Lola goes for this crazy kick, but Natty like ducks the first one, catches it the second time, and then drops her down into the sharpshooter. Eventually, Lola counters this into an ankle lock and then turns it into like a grapevine with the ankle lock. Eventually, Natty gets out of that, but Lola puts her into a triangle sleeper. Very impressive. When Carmen Petrovic comes out ringside just to be like, hey, Natty, another blonde Canadian. I'm in your corner here. She's been feuding with Lola, uh, which I wouldn't say she gives a distraction finish, but Lola, Somewhat, yeah. Yeah, Lola then gets rolled up yet again. And Natty shockingly pins Lola Vice. Yeah, I uh, I thought... Lola Vice looked good here. I thought she she hung with Natalia here for sure. Um, just, you can't get me excited about Natty. Sorry. Yeah. Um, we do a show called Was Next. We started in 2012. We're in 2014. And on that show, Natty has been this veteran who comes down yeah. and is just randomly friends with Bailey, randomly fighting friends people. with other people. Yeah, and still just, doing the same thing. And doing the same thing like all these years later. Yeah, she's that vet. She doesn't have a, a story going on on the main roster right now. So why not bring her down, have her have, uh, get these like newer talent to get used to working with these veterans and stuff. I get it. I can't get excited about an Italian match though, yeah. unfortunately. I was shocked that she beat Lola considering you think she's kind of a pet project but yeah I mean I guess it's you know it's the feud is cold you wouldn't it's kind of weird having main roster just lose cold without yeah. any sort of build to it sure there was the distraction the feud is Lola and I feel like she didn't just I feel she like she was just there yeah she's there you know she's new she's new to this she's so we're gonna see the karate girl and the I MMA so, girl yeah. fight again fight pit fight pit that would be good Right, Shayna. I think that I think that graduated to main roster. Shayna and Ronda didn't get it though, so no, that's true. Give it to these two. We see Sean Spears leaving. What, what do we? No, we have the uh, underground now in NXT. Oh right, right. yeah, sick. Oh, it's been good. No, no, no. That's what Shane would say. Yeah, no, sick. I, I know. But you said it with a <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, the NXT. The, other, the one in NXT was good. Yeah. Sean Spears, I just can't wait to talk about this guy. He comes out of the arena and he seems angry. He's like, hey, uh, Joe Gacy wasn't even on my radar. And he's like, I guess now I have to deal with this guy. When we hear, hey, Sean, and the camera pans up and Joe Gacy's on the roof again. He better be careful. The last time he was up there, he got thrown off the mm. roof. Uh, he goes, hey, Sean, you forgot this. I meant to give this back. And he throws the steel chair off the roof. I mean, Sean Spears was a few meters away, yeah. so safely would not hit him there. And then uh, Sean's just looking really confused. And then Oba Femi walks by, and Gacy yells like, whoopsies. Oh, hey, Oba Femi, almost hit you there too. My bad, as he maniacally laughs as the camera pans away. And Spears is just like, what the? So we're going to a Gacy Spears feud. I'm definitely enjoying this version of Gacy more than previous versions of Gacy. He yeah. does make me laugh sometimes. I do like the just appearing yeah. from out of nowhere, whether it's backstage segments, like under the ring, whatever. But I do feel uh, he's really just had his first feud in this character with Jack, And I feel we're going to have exactly the same uh, feud with Sean Spears. And I feel that a lot in nxt at times it's the stories are the same we just move people around oh, and it was the same the with dexter loomis was the same it's like okay he kidnapped someone they're scared of him they have a match they did the same with roddy they did yeah. the same with cameron grimes the original version of gacy was that and there's never really any change to the story to make it completely to make it very interesting to me and i feel sean spears here is just now playing dijak's role yeah, I, I feel like uh, I've, I've always said, I like G Gacy has given us some of the most awful stuff on TV mm. in, in the past few years, but I've always defended him because, like, I'm like, nah, there's something still he can wrestle, he's got something. I just, as a performer, he yeah. puts like 100 and yeah, yeah, I have Where to give him the respect. Given, I, I have right? to, like, every and time the content is shit. even when he's kidnapping Rick Steiner, he this guy yeah. was like, well, I guess I gotta kidnap Rick Steiner yeah. and do it. I'm like, all right, like, you're really. 
getting into this is legit just the Joker, but him. I mean, he was really Kevin McAllister and Home Alone he's too. More here, of a baby face though. Yeah, a baby yeah. face got Joker. He is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like him throwing yeah, a chair. Dennis the menace. Yeah, he's. He could have killed this guy. Like, he start throwing bricks. Mm pretty funny but yeah i guess we're getting that next week or maybe on stand and i think it'll be an extended feud and we're gonna have a moment where gacy is laughing and holding out his arms yes. and wants sean to hit him with a chair right you know it's coming yeah we see Stax is getting ready he's got a big matchup with the nxt champ Ilya dragunov in just a few minutes later tonight and you know tony and the family will be watching as they're gearing mm -hmm. up for this this match we get a recap of The Rock and Mama Rhodes and the whole belt thing. They didn't show a recap of Raw, at least on our feed here. They showed a recap of like a few weeks ago, like SmackDown and stuff. Mm. But uh, we need that updated one with the blood and the rain. Was it this? I think this was the this was a commercial for the Raw in Brooklyn. Oh, okay. I think, and it had already been shot because right. Rock was a surprise. Right, right, week, right, 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 right. I, I think we see Sol Ruka. We have a vignette here for her. She says the she loves the crest of a wave it can come in and and make things great but it can also come crashing down with heavy force and that's exactly what blair davenport did to me last april that's right nine months ago but now i'm back i've been rehabilitating i've been thinking about you blair while i've been working in the gym and don't be fooled by my carefree attitude because next week i will snatch your soul and then it kind of cuts to Blair kind of watching this interview with uh, Quinn. I'm going to always mess Kelly, this up. Kelly, Kelly Kincaid. Kincaid yeah. And she's like, hey, you know, what's, what do you think about that? And Blair with her, her mean face is like, oh, I, don't, I don't care about that beach bum. She's just always hanging out in sand. In fact, she is like sand because she's annoying. She's disgusting. And I always have a really hard time getting rid of her. So she can hang out with her TikTok dorks. And after I get in the ring with you, we'll see how well those docs repaired your ACL. So Sol can hang out with the TikTok dorks while Blair can hang out with Anakin Skywalker. By the I thought that's where she was going yeah. with that for sure. It's rough and coarse and gets everywhere. I think I said last week where I like Sol, but I often find these kind of, you know, like hippie surfer stoner gimmicks are hard to like actually get any passion out of. We saw a little bit out of here. She yeah. said she was pissed off. I yeah. liked that. Um, Want to see a bit more, but uh, definitely, like, she, I thought she sounded better here. Yeah, yeah. And and she was away. Like, it sucks, because as soon as she was just starting to make waves, see what I did there, she it was taken away from her. So it's like, I, I do wonder if we didn't have that injury, maybe where she'd be slotted in. But I, I, I hope that there's still something there. I, I like... We I, saw the wrestling still there. So Yeah, exactly, yeah. So we go to our next match. It is Stax taking on the champ, Ilya Dragunov. I must say Stax with his new gear. Sweet gear. He must have nice. spent a few stacks on that gear. It looks very good. Uh, Ilya always looks good, too. That that robe. Oh, yeah. Who's got the better robe, Ilya or, or Osprey? They must get the, their robes at the same no, guy. No, Osprey's a nice one. Like they're, right. His are like more money put into them. Yeah. But they are very similar with the fur and, and stuff. They're very nice. So Stax and Dragunov one on one. Stax drops Ilya with a drop kick, which Dragunov kind of gives him a face like, "Oh, okay, maybe I wasn't like ready for you here." And then Stax runs at him with this nice running up, like European uppercut, Italian uppercut, if I will, uh, as well. Ilya's like, "Oh, damn, okay." So then Ilya catches him and then power bombs him across the ring, and then they start to go at it back and forth. Stax comes back, though, and stomps on the hand of Dragunov, which becomes a big key factor on this episode because he stares to sell, like, ah! He's, like, got the, ah. oh, my good hand, hasn't he? Like, <laughs> little claw. He's like, ah! I think, I think the Spider-Man meme. <laughs> I, look, I'll save it for the promo. Yeah, yeah, later, definitely, but, yeah. definitely for later. Bless, Ilya. Bless is selling here because I was like, he's making, I mean, we just reviewed Rocky. Yeah. And like, it's similar, like the finger and like, bending oh, the, the finger, bending the finger yeah. and stuff. But Stax is now working on the arm. Uh, but then he comes back with a series of chops. There's a wicked German suplex here. And then another powerbomb from Dragunov, more like the jackknife powerbomb. And then the Torpedo Moscow for the one, two, three. But even though Ilya beat Stax, I think he, this, the story was like, oh, you know, the underboss, you kind of you kind of got skills there, which we've always been a fan of Stax 
actual wrestling. Yeah, like, and he's only gonna get better wrestling people like this because I feel like he's almost. If it's, it's got to be a young kid still, this guy stacks, but like, it's almost like when we've seen him face. I know Nakamura might not be like the best example in that, but that no, one but it time, was a good match. Yeah, it's like when he faces like those kinds of people, like this guy here, Dragonov. It's like it brings the best out of him. That I feel like that's the style of wrestling that he would go towards like that he would I, do i think he's got real potential uh he's good looking kid like he's he's learning it quick i enjoy him in his backstage segments he's yeah. playing a he's playing a cartoon character but i think he he brings a bit of life and believability to it at times and he really steps up when he's against these these harder hitting people um i this match wasn't long but he really impressed me in that time. Ilya is always great. Like it's yeah, it's hard to have a bad match with Ilya, but uh, Stacks, yeah, I was impressed with here. As the match is like ending, it kind of cuts to Tony and Luca backstage, and they're a little upset. But Tony's like, "All right, I need you to do something for me, Luca. I need you to set up a dinner for next week, me and Ilya." And he says the name of the restaurant. What was it? Uh, I thought he said Senegal. Which doesn't make sense. Yeah, I was like, what did you just say? Uh, so Luke is like, I'll, I'll I'll take care of it. So more on that later. But yes, mm -hmm. dinner next week. We get more of the prime target for Trick and Mellow. We meet Trick Williams' uncle James in Philly. See, this is what I like to see. He, he mentions that he kind of moved and lived in Philly for quite a while. So actually having this match in Philly is a big deal for Trixie. I was not aware of yeah. that. So thankfully they told me. He says, and what better city to face my former brother, Carmelo Hayes, in the city of brotherly love. It also shows him on like a football field and his like former coaches here. And then it kind of cuts between different people talking about revenge. CM Punk is very uh, well versed in revenge as he's like hey like these guys are, are gonna have to kill each other and there's nothing better than payback and then we see the 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 steps the rocky steps here well he he somehow runs from running the the steps of uh what the, the lincoln financial field yeah eagle stadium wells fargo wherever. and he's just running and he like runs through the concourse and then is at the art museum gonna <laughs> fly now. yeah i i definitely marked out for that we've been waiting like wrestlemania is in two weeks where the fuck is sylvester stallone where's rocky also philly i believe has pretty similar weather to we do yeah and this was probably filmed recently like, recently and he's topless running it bless him it must be pretty cold he was in, he's in fantastic he's shape. shape he's ready for this match um i'm i feel they've kind of uh moved away from his boxing stuff a little bit in his matches and yeah. maybe they should bring it yeah sorry it did show him in the gym showing him yeah. sparring a lot and obviously the time with with rocky and stuff but i wonder if that's something they could start bringing in a bit more his boxing ability it's gonna what crap lightning and what, I forget. excuse me what is the rocky line eat lightning crap thunder something like that right but yeah i i like the the it. The, the shot of him on the steps was yeah. pretty great. And I mean, Trick, you better get that photo frame for your house. That's absolutely. He looked great in it. So, good are stuff. you gonna show up at the steps just to take the photos of Way and I and crew finishing the run? Are you doing the Rocky run? I, I think we might be on a day before WrestleMania. Maybe. No, no thanks. WrestleMania Saturday. Got nothing else going on that day. NXT. Oh yeah. At twelve noon. Yeah. Jeez. Get me up, wake me up. Yeah. Or maybe Friday morning. They have a commercial. I, I'll tell you, I do love the ad for WrestleMania with The Rock, Seth, Cody, and Roman, like the movie trailer the one. The Hans Zimmer. Burr. Yeah, like very like Fast and Furious, like futuristic kind of Star Wars-y shit. They also ha clearly filmed ones with other people. And here we see the logo of Dream Chasers. Are you a fan of Meek Mill? Uh, who? He's going to be at WrestleMania. They didn't say performing. They just showed him in this ad and it says philly wrestlemania so i i presume uh, he's performing like uh the, he has a song that's basically the philly anthem like nightmares and dreams is pretty oh, much okay. like any philly person will be like he's that's, from philly yeah he's like the biggest philly star okay. the only big issue is uh i referenced earlier on this show hashtag where's diddy i wonder if meek mill knows that's also he's been linked to Diddy in some. 
you could say that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So maybe he'll perform at WrestleMania, which is pretty cool as well. I'm sure a lot of people are excited about that. But we go to our next match. It or sorry, no, not our next match, but backstage preparing for their match in the main event. The Wolf Dogs hanging out, and Baron Corbin walks in and says, "Braun, you're looking real tan, dude. Like you better relax with that stuff." And he's like. Pfft. I'm looking tan. You're looking really pale. Like, why don't you ever go outside? It's really nice to go outside. You should try it sometime. And Corbin claps back with, uh, sorry, tanning beds aren't the actual sun. Like, that's not going outside. And he goes, ah, I, I know that. I know that. And then gives him a, a like, bottle of the sun. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's basically the tanning, tanning cream that's, like, the sun. He's like, yeah, you should use some of this because you're pale and ugly and crap. And Corbin's like, what do you mean I'm ugly? What's Should we get some nice hands for, for WrestleMania? Uh, nah. <laughs> You're not down with that? I mean, I'm pretty I'm pretty white, but I wouldn't necessarily say I'm like pale, but I don't know. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. The, this is when they're interrupted because the Good Brothers walk in and they say, oh, what's going on? Working on your tans? Well, you're busy working, worrying about tans. It's possible that we pin Alpha Academy at stand and deliver and don't even have to pin you to become champions. If you don't, you know, take the match seriously tonight. And the good brothers say, we hope you don't lose to those guys. Cause we just want a tag team match. We just want a traditional tag team match. And that's what we want. And, uh, too sweet me, bro. And Braun kind of makes fun of them and says too sweet me, bro. Uh, do you want to know a good thing as we're talking about tans? Okay. So far. And it's a little far ahead. WrestleMania Saturday, WrestleMania Sunday, High of 16 and wow. 17 degrees and mainly sunny. Wow. Low at night of 7 and 8 degrees. Uh, and if you're American, look it up. So you're saying you could tan at WrestleMania? I'm saying it. we might not be shivering in the pissing rain like we were at uh, WrestleMania 35. Right, right. Yeah. I didn't think it was that bad. It got bad towards the end. And like as soon as the show ended, it like... It down. I feel like remember we, we were lucky. We had a ride. Car. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. we were in there, but yeah. Well, we're also lucky. Because... But this looks like I guess this is the match they're going to. I mean, we have the other contenders later, but they're really no one else is interacting. It with. should not be. No. I know, but no, no one else has been interacting with them. Yeah, it's just been feels like backstage. This is the match they're setting it up. It doesn't sound good, but no. Yeah, uh, we go to Ridge Holland in the ring. Got his music playing, his name in lights in the in the squared circle here, and he goes, "I want to thank some people. I want to th thank Mighty John. I want to thank William Regal. I want to thank Shawn Michaels for thinking and and supporting a washed up rugby player in this world of, of wrestling and helping me get here. I appreciate it. He's very somber here. Mm -hmm. He says that I am very aware of the perception around me, and I get all the DMs, the messages, and well, I know." And it's a difficult conversation that I've had with my friends, my family, and myself. And I just want the best for me. And that's what everyone wants from me, the best for me. So I've made my decision. And it's a tough decision. But I'm stepping away from in-ring competition indefinitely. And says, I, I'm lucky and I'm blessed. And I'll appreciate you all more than you'll ever know. As he leaves. And we're all waiting for either someone to attack him or or something and no attack just, no biggie out and it zooms in on his uh his like graphic yeah didn't understand what's I, going on here. I find this very odd like looking on looking on twitter so many places are like it's legit i don't know i it feels it's been part of this story for weeks i don't know if you'd give so much airtime to a ridge holland to retire hmm. you know he did say indefinitely so but so they've moved him to the alumni section on the website apparently it's just if this is story where is this going yeah i don't know it's really strange um i think i i actually do think he sounds good as much as i i've hated this whole thing yeah i think he sounds very likable i think he sounds very genuine and natural um when he's talking um and like as far as getting like the emotion across and in this promo i thought he he sounded great but i'm just confused by it yeah it's almost like hey actually i think you a look good sound good hey you look good in the suit too but 
what you're saying is like, oh, I'm retiring because you're still dragging off in the storyline of like, I'm oh, I hurt someone retiring. and hurt people. And they not once by name reference Big E. No. And like part of me was watching this being like, oh, is is Big E going to be the like, one to come, come out. out? Be like, no, you're great. Things happen. I don't blame you. Like having that on TV. And no, you're you're someone who could be a champion and motivate you. And maybe that's something we get down the line. But it's it's, it's weird. Well, you came in and you. You beat up Gallus and you hurt Ilya. Well, Ilya is still the champion and he's fighting in the next fight for you. So Ilya is fine. Yeah. Gallus, all right. I haven't seen them for a little bit, but I'm sure we're not. Fine. We're not worried we're about not it. Worried actually, about yeah. That. You actually did a good thing. <laughs> so, but if this is like Ridge is like, hey, I'm thinking of hanging up the boots, and they're like, cool. How about we write a little storyline to get there? Wouldn't Again, be this. What's the point? Yeah, it wouldn't be this story. So I, I, I feel like maybe there's still something. Maybe come. he's going home for a little bit yeah. and they just, this is a way to write him off TV for a few months and then he'll come back and, but uh, yeah, just a little head scratching. Yeah. We'll again, see how it plays out. Again, like this guy has had moments in NXT and WWE where we've been like, ah, this guy's not really that great. And then he's had moments where you're like, Hey, this guy's got, he's pretty good. Yep. And like, definitely. And I always uh, never forget played on the Toronto Wolfpack for rugby. He did, yeah. Never forget. We go to Lyra Valkyria. She has a promo here similar to Roxanne's earlier in the night. And it's a video where she's discussing different villains. Like, uh, I got the Star Wars one. I didn't quite get the Game of Thrones one because I never finished the show. But she's referencing all these things like, hey, there's this team and this team. And you chose your... yeah, Choosing good and choosing evil. And you're choosing to be this way. And somehow you're being like gifted with title shots and like that's not okay but i'll allow it because now you've like pissed me off and she mentioned that she didn't just beat anyone for this title in fact she beat becky lynch for this and she fought her way here and roxanne you're just taking the easy way out by getting this title from attacking me and in another world maybe we could have been friends because we have similar interests we have trained so hard to get here and we've got to face our idols and listing all the th different things and shows like that. They've been kind of parallel lines here, but it all comes to this at stand and deliver. But yeah, I, I think there's not much more you need to do with this story. Lyra was like, was quote unquote hurt for this angle and everything. And I think uh, referencing it's ready. It's yeah. It's like, ready. yeah, it's like we, good. we could already go to this. So, yeah. but yeah, I, I think it'll be good. We go to our next match. There was a shot where, Lyra's running, and as she runs, she leaves behind these little white feathers that made me laugh. Oh, yeah. She's still the bird. You're still the bird lady, yeah. but like, yeah, the bird lady versus the little kid who rides the bus. Yes. <laughs> bus girl. Bus girl and bird lady. Duke Hudson makes his entrance here to take on Josh Briggs. I noticed Josh Briggs did not get an entrance, which I was like, does that mean you're winning the match? Yeah. Which is that it was completely right. Dijak is sitting at the commentary desk here with his sunglasses on inside watching this. Uh, Duke is in control early on here and gets an Uranagi out of the corner on Briggs for a near fall and then a sidewalk slam. But when we come back from break, Briggs is now in control and hits a sidewalk slam of his own for a near fall. And then they climb up top and Briggs, the two kind of big, big lads here. There's a superplex for a near fall. Duke starts to hype up here and does the chase you version of the bionic elbow and then hits a huge, like what the, the boss man slam here from mm -hmm. Duke, which looked great, but it's a kick out. Eventually there's Briggs who fires up with a back suplex and then runs at him with the clothesline from hell as Vic is like, Oh, very similar to what JBL. Yeah. For the one, two, three and Briggs wins the match. And right after Obafemi appears on the perch and says, oh, I got Dijak over here, Duke over here, two worthy challengers. Briggs. Briggs sorry, lost. Briggs yeah. Briggs, and, sorry, Duke lost. Oh, yeah. man, I kind of wanted him in that match too. Briggs here, Dijak there, and what a match it would be if I fought both of you in a triple threat. Yeah, he had a, a great line about uh, both of you climbing that mountain, but I am the mountain. Yes. Um, yeah, I. It's official on now for Santa Delivery. I quite enjoyed the match. I think Josh Briggs has really stepped up recently. I'm, I've been enjoying his singles run. Um, and yeah, Shanks see Duke 
not be involved in it, but uh, I thought these two had a b- good big lads match. I liked what Dijak was saying on commentary about how Briggs has basically just taken everything he does. And there there are a little lot of similarities between the two. Uh, I'll go back. I really enjoyed their their moments in the Iron Survivor at deadline. I thought Dijak and Briggs were two of the highlights of that match. Um, For sure. So seeing them go at it now, um, I wonder if we're going to see that little team up again to try and take up out the bigger Obafemi. Uh, but yeah, well, we expected we were getting some meaty match and this is what we're getting. And I think it will be pretty good. Um, I think Oba has this great just charisma about him when he speaks. And I, I like his, he's a confident heel, which you don't see a whole lot of. You see the, you see the, the cocky chicken shit heels a lot in wrestling, but this guy is like calling the shots. He's like, Look at him. yeah. I'm I'm a mountain. I'm big. I'll beat everyone. And sure, let's make it triple threat. Whereas normally it's like the champion, like what? No, because I've yeah, I I it lowers my odds. Yeah, of it's, he's he's not really a heel. He's still like the baby face that is like a heel, I guess. Yeah, yeah, I, it's weird. I don't Same know. with Briggs. Like Briggs is kind of the baby face that's been acting like a heel. And really? Dijak is a heel. That's, they're all, the, they're all the same. They're, they're, they're all the same. They're all doing that. But uh, I, I think it's working for all three of them right now. So, yeah, uh, yeah I, I think this this match like has added to the card. We've been a little down on the card, but yeah. I think this one could be uh, a little dark sleeper hit. Yeah, on this show. you're gonna see you're gonna see Dijak hit some crazy moonsault. You're gonna see them power bomb each other, clothesline. It's gonna be pretty good. Yeah, you're gonna slap each other around for sure. We get part three of the prime target, the final part. We see them talking about revenge. I mentioned earlier CM Punk knows a lot about that. Punk also talking about revenge that says when you're out for revenge, you're really supposed to get off two graves because if you're you're out to seek revenge, you might as well call it quits. You've already lost Mm -hmm. two. Uh, We see Johnny Gargano. He says, you don't get back the hurt from this. You mentioned this earlier where he's like, I fought my friend and we'll never get it back. It's like Mm -hmm. you're in a match with him at mania for a tag title yeah. but okay uh cody then says he predicts that trick williams will be winning this cody got a green screen for some reason for his shot everyone else was like oh, okay. sat down yeah. or backstage at raw and cody was like yo put like homelanders <laughs> background yeah. behind me uh Mello says like trick you don't know what you know about selling tickets what you know about selling out what you know about tv main event titles nothing you don't know about that I'm the one who brought you in, and I'm the one who will take you out. Champ also says he thinks it's going to be the the greatest NXT match of all time. Yes, Champo is also here. Yes, Champo. I mean, it's kind of similar to that story, right? Like oh, two friends, right? Like yeah, they, they do yeah, this a lot. Copy NXT, paste, right? But, like uh, yeah, best match be in NXT. Greatest match in NXT history. I, I don't know about that. Will it be better than NXT. Johnny and Almas? Johnny, yeah, that's a that's that's tough. To, Champo, why do you got to go Champa out and say Gargano that? Gargano in New Orleans. I do think uh, I do think these two will have match of the night oh, and yeah. and a match people will be talking about from that weekend. But best match of NXT history. There's a few there that we would definitely like to like to argue with you, Champa. Some of them Champa's in. Yeah. Some of them like the FTR DIY. Absolutely. Adam Cole Johnny. We could do this all day. We watch a lot of NXT. We do. We go to Meta Four. In the production truck, very DX here, as they are like pushing the buttons and they're like, Oh, cut to us. No, cut back to the ring. And it's like the ring's not on, the lights are off, and then it cuts back to them in the truck. And they say, We'd like to introduce you to the hosts of Stand and Deliver, the metaphor. That's right. Not just one host. We get metaphor hosts. Yeah, these work. They're funny. They they make the most sense to yeah. us. This, yeah. Yeah, they need to be in they'll in, get a ridiculous entrance and ridiculous costumes. They'll be fun. They'll eat cheesesteaks, they'll do rocky stuff. Yeah be good we see ariana grace a video in sent in from her social media she's in her closet looking for some dresses because she can't wait to dress up georgina Gigi dolan and she's gonna look so good she's gonna look so good and i got the perfect dress for her so i think this leads up to next week the reveal of the georgina i the guess so debut of georgina do we, do we need that on a go home show maybe not it's probably yeah they're probably going to do a lot of stuff we don't need it did we need ridge holland cutting a goodbye promo like two weeks before the pay-per-view he could have done it like after the yeah pay-per-view 
Uh, we cut to... Oh, no, if he's going back to Wales. That's right. He's got a flight booked, maybe. He's already like sealer. Yeah. We have... This was uh, unintentionally hilarious to me. Uh, Ilya Dragunov. Think about it. Dragunov wrestled 30, 40 minutes ago on this show. Here he is backstage, alone in his locker room, when Quinn McKay comes in, like, hey, Ilya... Uh, Kelly Kincaid. Kelly Kincaid comes in. He's and using her dead name. <laughs> she comes in and is like, hey... Uh, you know what's going on with your hand, and he's just been sitting here for forty minutes with his hand out his like this. Broken. But like, think in wrestling, they have people coming out after the match, like, "Hey, are you okay?" And like all these things. But the way he's holding his hand, like, ah, oh, my hand. Yeah, but Ilya, Ilya is not like other people, is he? Look, I I think this guy is legit pound for pound one of the best wrestlers going. But this was oh, he's a crazy over actor. He's it's, way it too over. Sometimes works for him, but like it's been getting very hammy and quite laughable because he's um, in a fucking feud with a mobster. So, like, I like the I like the idea of I like the idea of selling his hand from this match that there's actually that been some damage to it. Um, but just the way it was like this claw, like you can do it a little more sucky. You have right? they do it all the time in wrestling when they cut to like, hey. You're at in the trainer's office. Yeah. Like, what's going on? Nah, I don't want to see the trainers. Ah! Just, ah! So, champ, are you okay? No. Like, it was just so over the top. And then on top of that, the lawyer for the mobster comes in for those keeping score and is like, hey, uh, you got a dinner next week. Tony's inviting you for a reservation. And he's like, ah, I know where the restaurant is. And Crucifina goes, no, 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 it's not at that restaurant. And then hands him a, an envelope, like an invitation. And he opens it. You're going to need this and walks out. So where will these two have dinner next week? Yeah. And Luca earlier was like, this place, I, is it even real? And Tony's like, oh, yeah. What did they real. say it was? I didn't catch the name of yeah. it. But it, it's some mafia mecca, I guess. Okay. Well, wait a second. Like, is Tony going to bring him to like... Like I imagine maybe like somewhere where it's like an underground fighting ring, somewhere to train, spar to like show like I, I don't know like I don't know what what the what the story is gonna go with this. Wait and see. But I I definitely laughed at Ilya just really being extra with the hand, and I I imagine this was in the storyline now for this match that he's got like some that sort of got an injury, yeah. hand thing going on. Great. So let us know where do you think Tony D will take. Ilya for dinner. Will it be the Olive Garden? Which can be, if Tony ends up winning this thing, it could be a good thing to split him and Stax because Stax can be like, I shut up out there. Sorry, <laughs> motorbikes. Um, he can be like, well, I was the one that actually injured him to right. help you win it, maybe. Yeah, true. We get the announcement that next week is the triple threat, the number one contender for the tag team match which includes lwo axiom and fraser and the good brothers mm -hmm. which you'd think it's just the good brothers winning this i it would be a way better match with all four teams i think and yeah. I'm, I'm just gonna really hope that it is that match but we'll, we'll see. see we'll see <laughs> so uh, also next week is a face-to-face -face. i imagine it closes the show with mellow and trick one last time uh, that's going to be the main event by the looks of yeah, things so make sense. Yeah, that should be the main yeah. event of Stand and Deliver. No bones about it. We go to our main event of tonight, though. The Wolf Dogs putting a match offer on the line. If it's like an eliminator, if they win this match, Alpha Academy get to be added to the tag title match at Stand and Deliver. Outcome Otis and Akira Tazawa taking on the Wolf Dogs. Uh, early on, it's the Wolf Dogs kind of uh, sorry. It's it's the Wolf Dogs being sent out to the outside. And Otis lifts up Tazawa and throws him out of the ring on top of both of them, which was great. As we come back from a commercial break, Braun is just running full steam ahead with his running shoulder block, sending Tazawa into another planet. Uh, there's then Baron Corbin with the world's strongest slam, which I was like, did he just hit that? And then Vic Joseph is like, I'm pretty sure Baron Corbin just hit Mark Henry's finisher. But anyways, the match continues. Uh, Otis is in there and hits this huge elbow to Braun's face and then backdrops both guys at the same time, which was very impressive here, and then sets up for his, what does he call this? The worm, the elbow drop? His, the caterpillar. The caterpillar, yeah. that's right. Yes, never forget. 
heavy machinery mm-hmm. here. The cat. Uh, eventually, that's a kick out, though. And then Otis also hits a world strongest slam. Mark Henry was watching this, just smiling. Uh, and while he hits this, it's Tazawa who comes in with this crazy shining wizard to Baron Corbin's temple. And then they pick up Braun Breaker, and Otis puts Braun on his shoulders in the electric chair as then Tazawa jumps off the top rope, almost for like a doomsday. But it's it's Braun Breaker who counters this in midair with one of his uncle's favorite moves, the like fall away slam, power slam. Yeah, like we see Hangman and Bandito do. Which that was crazy. Yeah, this was nuts. They actually don't off even... the shoulders. They like, don't replay this at all, which is crazy. But this is funny because all this week, I kept seeing these clips of Steiner hitting that move. Right. And someone was tweeting and it got pretty like viral this week of like, hey, someone needs to bring this move back. And everyone's reply is like, well, it's Steiner. So like mm. Braun has, I'm pretty sure he's done something similar to this before. And here he is on NXT doing yeah, it. Yeah, Braun just every week is pulling out new things. Crazy moves. Yeah, this was, in, he murdered Tozawa here. There was no getting up for Akira Tozawa. He mm. squashed him like a pancake. However, Otis is still up. He gets sent to the outside. And then they double power bomb him through the announce table, which was, he's a big boy. So that was a big spot. They go back in the ring and Corbin just, hits Tazawa with this nasty looking power bomb and then rolls him through so that he's standing and he's hit by a spear from breaker for the one, two, three, sorry, alpha Academy are not going to be standing or delivering next week. Yeah. Uh, I, I thought this was pretty fun. I just Ron and Baron are this, these great, like steamrollers just coming through and yeah. just powerhouses fun and fast. Uh, Bron just pulling out these, these crazy moves all the time his spear always looks great baron really stepped up as well in this team um i'd like to see these two actually stay as a team i think there's obviously a a really high ceiling for bron on the main roster and i'm sure once stan and deliver season is over uh he'll be a a heavily featured character on smackdown um but there is something just really likable about this team as well so will you start with him in the team or or have him just more as a tag team or more of a singles. I yeah. don't know. Uh, but I'm enjoying everything they're doing so far. Yeah, yeah. It's easily the best Corbin's done for me in his entire career of, of wrestling. Like, it's he's got something that's actually clicking. And I think the comedy between the two is pretty funny. But it's like Breaker's teaching him how to powerbomb and stuff. Like, I can't recall Corbin usually wrestling. <laughs> my, I can't name you, like, a good Baron Corbin match from before teaming mm-hmm. with breaker so like instantly it makes him more interesting whether or not he's just like the base guy because he's a bit bigger for like some of their opponents it works because then you have breaker hitting these crazy i'm watching back this clip of this like electric chair thing is fucking crazy and like yeah braun we've definitely said it it will be a big deal post mania for for wwe main roster and i i can't wait to see it and will it be the wolf dogs together we shall see but we won't know who the wolf dogs are facing until next week when all teams come out now, and NXT goes off the air with a giant multi-tag team brawl, which again leads me to believe that all four of these teams should just be in the match at Stand and Deliver. Yeah, you've got some really good talent there with Axiom, Nathan Fraser, LWO and stuff. It would be a shame for them not to be there. They should um, be on the card. So, what? You have good brothers beat them up during the match? You have, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, how do we get there? I just really don't want just good brothers no, versus these no. guys uh, as funny as it could be the two yeah. teams that i don't think sean wants that either come on sean <laughs> give us what we want <laughs> yeah but that was nxt uh some good some some bad i i don't think i'm still not as hyped as i think i could have once been for stand and deliver but some of the matches that they've announced like this looks like a pretty good card i know it'll be tough for some people it's at lunchtime on the Saturday before going for a long day of mania, but the triple threat, Oba, Dijak, Briggs, Lyra and Roxanne, Trick and Carmelo, Braun and the tournament winners, whoever that may be, and Ilya and Tony. So, so far five. Uh, I feel the, the lack of enthusiasm across the board for the NXT championship match is what's dragging this down. Yeah. I don't like Tony V. Ilya is fine for, I know it's here, but Heat Wave or something like that. But for your WrestleMania weekend, it does feel less than, or it, it feels like one of the TV specials they do. Yeah. Um, as we said, we, we like both guys and we think it could deliver in ring. 
but I think now you've added that um, that triple threat match, and once we get confirmation of hopefully it's this multi-person tag, I think we'll end up after next week's show being going like, you know what, this actually looks like a good show, and I think you'll have three matches that really hit on this. Yeah, I, for for me, the 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 selling point is Trick and Mellow. Yeah, like you could put anything else on the card. It's that that's the match that I think the crowd will take to the most. I imagine Trick's entrance will be pretty loud and elaborate and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. Everything else is just like kind of an extra bonus, but I feel like there's a lot of talent that will stand up and deliver, as you say, like mm -hmm. to, to really to show up. So I, I might not be as hyped as I am for maybe some of the other stuff going on right now for mania weekend. But at the same time, I'm sure after any, every NXT show, we leave the show. It's good. But really, this is how it should be. We should be excited for the yeah. WrestleMania yeah. over yeah. NXT. Of course. Which, like, go back five years ago wasn't the case. And yeah. really, like, this is how it should be. But. Yeah, for sure. So that was NXT. Any uh, highlights, lowlights for you? Uh, yeah, I, I enjoyed the main event. I thought the targets were good. Um, and, uh, yeah, just the, the announcement of... Um, of the triple threat as i said i am I'm, I'm kind of excited and and like I, I i know they split it up into three parts and i'm sure it's put up but the prime targets are good like i'm assuming jeremy borash or whoever is like kind of helping or behind these things and i think that adds to it like that has the prime target and the title match doesn't so it's is like the guy from ott still working oh shit. I know he okay oh right that could be that guy before, what's his right? name sean i think i forget but yeah yeah he was fantastic yeah. this this video was great so yeah. like when you see it as the package on the pay-per-view it'll look even better because yeah. they have so much they can condense but yeah overall i didn't hate this episode but it it still is like leaving me like ah uh, maybe not as excited as i could be but yeah i still liked it we've got one piece of feedback from Morgan who says those prime target videos god damn if that doesn't tell you what the real main event is for stand and deliver i don't know anymore Dijak spears was damn good Alpha Academy Wolf Dogs as well. The Natty surprise appearance served a purpose for Lola Vice to get some reps with a veteran. Ilya Stacks was solid. I'm not too sure if that Ridge retirement was legit or not. Uh, it has seemed to be since reported by Fightful that this is indeed storyline and uh yeah it, as as we figured it was he's got a lot left in the tank yeah so uh where they go with that uh we'll, we'll see but he wasn't wearing a pink salmon no. blazer on that show though and dicky bird in the chat says yes sean ryan that video sean ryan. Her, yeah he's gotcha. amazing and it definitely looks like something he would yeah he would have done suit too so good stuff there speaking of dicky hey you want to support podcasts like us and post wrestling go to chop teascom because davy and i are small time content creators who chat about wrestling and the best way to support us is buying our merch for yourself to wear and rock for uh mania weekend you it might be too late for that but i mean i ordered a hat and got it like in two days so mm. free shipping on almost everywhere and we have so many shirts and hoodies and hats and everything with our poison rana logos all over it some up next stuff as well as the philly inspired rocky steps poison rana t-shirt that comes in the baseball style tee the oh, yeah. ringer tee we can get any design on all these different tees on this site so chop teescom slash poison rana and support your boys and get you some fresh gear here because uh the site's looking good. and i know stay tuned they're going to be having some stuff for mini weekend maybe some sales and deals and stuff like that so stay tuned for that but thank you everyone for listening if you've made it this far really do appreciate you people in the youtube chat here on the post feed love you uh we'll be back sunday i maybe not sunday we'll be coming back from collision we'll not, be doing something not live but we'll we'll try our best coming out there uh our thoughts on yeah on collision in london absolutely so again follow all the socials and then next tuesday night when we go live for the go home show for mania weekend for next T stand and deliver. Uh, we'll, we'll go through some mania predictions. We'll go through all of that on yes. next Tuesday night. So next Tuesday after up next, we'll go live chat about NXT chat about some mania. And then the Wednesday we'll both be traveling to we Philly. Will be, yeah. So there you go. It's, it's all coming together just next week. So thank you everyone. Really do appreciate everyone out there at poison Rana pod, Twitter, Instagram, poison for everything else. And I, myself, Braden Harrington. I'm on Twitter, Instagram at the Bray D. And you can find me at Davey Portman. That's it. That's all. Take care. Goodbye. Be safe. 
and look at you now. Ahoy! First time in a long time, but back like I never left. Taking these things as it comes, you know me, I don't read ahead. Watch me burn down everything, BBE on the TV set. When I'm in control on the road, you can never really know what's up next. 